Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. Before we pull up our video, we always want to start off our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what for investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our Forest Technical Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. In each video, we look at the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll review the gold chart to come up with leading sentiment. We'll try to create a low volatility and sidebar watch list, and we have an education spotlight at the end. Please send your feedback and comments to contact at dmbfx.com, and let's head to the charts. As usual, we are starting off with the gold daily chart, and we can see a little sideways action again after 12 days of moving aggressively up the market does need to breathe and what's also interesting about this is that as uh, we continue to have indecision about the debt ceiling in the states and we continue to have um, uh, you know debt issues in Europe that uh, the gold is beginning to pause we think that that's why gold has strengthened because uh, if we're going to weaken the dollar by um, raising the debt ceiling limit then gold takes off. But now, as there is no uh, determination as of yet, gold is moving sideways. So there's, there, that's certainly, you know, the the outside story. But technically, looking at our technical analysis, we can also see uh, a 12-day move up needs time to breathe. And, you know, hopefully uh, we can get a pullback to look for a new trade. Uh, but we'll continue to monitor this tight range that we're in right now, which is basically... Um, you can see buyers are coming in around 1580. 1580 buyers are coming in finding value, uh, but sellers are finding value in this 1600 price level. So there's like a $20 range that the buyers and sellers are batting over. We did get an increase in volume today, and I would assume that's that's part of trying to keep it up. If we were to close below these wicks, then the sellers really would have tried to accelerate the move down to the moving average. So. They get an increase in volume, and just very fractionally, we can see the buying volume now getting above the selling volume. It's been a while since we've seen that. Now, when we come over to our hourly look and look at our market profile, we can see that we are oversold, and we're getting a little hookup. So there may be a, a chance for a longer-term position in the meantime. Right? I don't know if it's going to be a long-term position. But certainly for a short-term swing, we see that we are oversold. You know, maybe another push to the point of control here at 1587 will bring about that short-term. Longer term, I would wait for this to come back a little bit more before I would try to get a long-term gold position. So we have gold kind of indecision. What's that say for the dollar? Well, down goes the dollar. <laughs> down goes the dollar today. Uh, we can see just an absolute fall off of the dollar and we can see the uh, pound taking off the pound taking clear control although uh, we got a divergence and move to the side fractionally uh, below zero but either way the dollar died today and so what do we see with this move down we saw a huge move up and as we come over to our daily chart we can see our downtrend channel has been violated we have moved um, above that and what's good about this is for the bulls is that in addition to breaking our downtrend line here in addition to breaking our downtrend line we also came in today with more volume we also got more volume today so even though selling volumes in control we had more volume as we broke through resistance as you broke through a channel and so usually, you know, that's what we want. We want increased volume as we're breaking a channel to help us say, are we going to continue to move higher? Now, there's a couple things to look at. Uh, where could we go? Well, there's 1.625 could be a place 
together. We can see sellers kind of pushing down, kind of showing their strength here around 1.625. I'm sorry, 1.6525. 1.6525 might be a place. There's also, you know, some choppiness right basically where uh, the pound dollar is right now. So uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens here. We had three days up here. We had an inside bar. And once we got above that, just really took off. So now we can clearly see not only are we in a sell zone, but we're out of our, uh, our Bollinger Bands. Um, we're well off our long-term moving average. We're well off neutral. So that has to be something to watch. Um, and as we already stated, the pound is in control. We have clear divergence uh, between the, uh, the pound and the dollar. And so we should begin seeing a, a move back to uh, parity. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to come all the way down. These can also make their way up to where the pound dollar is. And we're going to see the continued weakness in the euro dollar. Here, we can see the euro dollar. Now, it's not as strong as the pound dollar because the pound dollar has already broken. Not only has it broken, it has clearly moved out of the channel. And we can see that the euro dollar has not done that yet. What we also don't see on the euro dollar is that increase in volume today. So the selling volume is still control. The sellers still can say, hey, this downtrend channel is still in effect. So tomorrow will give us confirmation. We don't have the volume yet, but maybe we'll see something tomorrow. Um, and you can kind of see places to watch. You can see this choppiness right in this price level here, 1.45. That was a, a previous place of resistance, and that matches almost up basically with this swing high here. So if we can close above this, if we can get some volume, that's what I would look for. Otherwise, the sellers are definitely going to try to push this back down. Why are they going to do that? Well, as we come over to our one-hour time frame, we can see uh, we are uh, well into a selling zone. Unlike the pound dollar, though, we're not outside of the bands. We are still we got outside and kind of moved right on over. We're also well above now our long-term moving average, and we spent some time trying to catch up to it, and we finally did. So we're in a selling zone. We're above our long-term moving average, and just like the pound dollar, we can clearly see the divergence, the euro shooting up, the dollar shooting down. Um, the euro, though, showing strength, though. Remember, the pound was you know sitting at zero, whereas the euro is definitely above zero. So definitely some strength there. And we definitely should see a continuation. So we'll move over to our last one, which is the dollar franc. And here we can see on the daily that we never did make our way back up to our previous support. We did not make it all the way up here. With the dollar weakening, uh, we are mo looks like we're heading back down to test that support level. That support is at uh, 0.8808. 0.808. So uh, we'll see if this is going to hold up. We got, um, you know, on parity volume, selling volume still in control. Uh, if the weakness continue, I would say we're probably going to go back and test this. Maybe we're going to start a new channel just like this. So as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and grab our horizontal line and put it in there. Okay. Now as we come over to our long-term view, we can see we are well below our long-term moving average. But as far as Bollinger Band zones, we're in a neutral zone, um, heading towards a buying zone. Maybe we'll get that buy as we get closer to this uh, previous support level. But just like everything else, the dollar tank, the franc is in control, and the franc did get itself above zero. So that is certainly good. And as long as the franc is in control and above zero, we will continue to press down. As we look at our low volatility and inside our watch list, we currently do not have any candidates that are qualifying, but we'll try to keep you up to date as the night progresses. So we're going to continue our conversation. Yesterday we talked about the trader committee in your brain and that for each trade as you're watching the market, that committee is talking in your head. And so the question that we asked you yesterday is who is controlling that trading committee in your head? Uh, which voice are you listening to? And there's probably about five vi voices um, that are working against you. Um, 
that one voice of reason has to do battle with these other voices. One voice is the end critic. Oh, you always lose. Look at this. The trade's already going against you. Oh, you're just not good enough. Uh, another voice is the saboteur. And I, I would equate the saboteur to greed. Uh, once you get profitable, um, it's, it's trying to force you to do more, and you're over-trading, and then the, you were profitable for the day, you were green for the day, and suddenly you're now down for the day. What about the perfectionist? You have to win every time. You didn't win last time. You didn't win the last two times. Uh, Chicken Little. Mm, I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, and, of course, the doubter. You can't do this. This is going to work. It never works. And so, again, how are you managing that dialogue before each trade as you're sitting and watching the market? How are you managing that? How are you bringing your voice to that community to uh, win that conversation about the trade? That is the key to success, managing that dialogue as these Inner critics, the saboteur, the perfectionist, chicken little and the doubter are going against you about your trade. How are you winning that? Now we know we win that. One way we win that is by having a system that is tried, tested, and proven. And so therefore we can say over a period of time we can have a positive expectancy, meaning we know over time we will make more money than we will lose because we've tested it. That's the main way that we control these five voices. And the other way is by staying focused and disciplined and not allowing the emotions of those five voices to control your trading. And that's what we're about at dmbfx.com, focus, discipline, high probability trading. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.